This is the Ramesseum, obviously named after Ramses. This is where you get the sense of scale though. An important point that Stephen Mailer pointed out is if you look at the carvings on the left, they're different from the carvings on the right. Carvings on the left may be older. The carvings on the right are deeper, and they were most likely done for Ramses because there was a tendency during certain periods to deface the names of older uh, so-called pharaohs. And so Ramses wanted to make sure, or his priest maybe wanted to make sure that his name and all the writings about him were kept almost forever and it would be very difficult to deface something that was so deeply cut into the stone like this. Now we don't see so far any sign of lost ancient technology or super ancient work. This is all limestone and again according to Stephen and others Limestone was the preferred material afterwards because limestone was softer. You could work it with bronze chisels and stone hammers. But when it comes to carvings or buildings which were made of granite, basalt, or quartz, calcite, that requires tools that are harder than bronze. The question is what tools were they? In the archaeological record, there are no tools, as far as I know, other than bronze chisels and stone hammers. So the harder stone is hinting at us that the work, that work that was done is older than the pharaonic dynastic Egyptians. This is the Ramesseum. What you can tell is you can see the doorway was filled in later. That's mud brick. The wall is limestone. But what's more Im incredible is this. This is the remains of a monstrous statue. This is one kneecap or one knee out of rose granite from Aswan. And part of the rest of him is over here, next to this temple. You can see his head, you can see his shoulder. Over here are his feet. Yeah, no, you can see you can develop his anger. Even a woman can develop his anger. And you keep on looking at so in terms of a sense of scale, again, this is the statue, or part of the statue. This is part of his head, and his ear, and then coming down that way, his shoulder. 1,000 tons finished, one block of stone. Originally, of course, it would have been much more than a thousand tons because it would have been a rough piece to start with. Put your back into it. Stop my around. Wow. So here's the the bottom of part of the one thousand statue and I believe this is the base on which he uh, stood and just the size of his feet is my hand in comparison or one foot compared to a foot
My foot's about the size of his toenail. So again, finished at a thousand tons. So how did they move it 500 miles from the quarry at Aswan? Most, if not all, of the rose granite came from the Aswan quarry. And so how was it moved? How do you move a thousand tons? You're not obviously going to move it on rollers across a desert. You're not going to be able to build a reed boat big enough, strong enough to, to be able to carry a finished sculpture at a thousand tons. And if, 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 uh, if it was brought here raw, as a raw blank stone prior to carving, then you're talking at least 1,200 tons, maybe 1,300 tons. How would they have moved it? <laughs>